when he uh, teamed up with um, uh, names escaping me. But yeah, don't look to me. I don't know. <laughs> Baron, uh, Len Rossi. Sorry, Len Rossi. Uh, but he had picked Bobby Eaton. And uh, Bobby said, well, I wasn't, wasn't trying to win. I knew I was supposed to lose, but I just wasn't supposed to look good in the match. And that was his first match. And he kept on getting picked to uh, to come in, to lose to guys. And to, and this may shock those of you who know of Bobby Eaton and know the greatness of Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton never took a class, never was trained, never went to wrestling school, never had any formal training to be a professional wrestler. Bobby Eaton just watched wrestling on television, just like every kid his age did in the South. And he just was. Yeah, he just was. That would happen three years later. The very first dog collar match took place August 2nd, 1980. Now, For who con- are you to tell me that Roddy Piper was wrong? Wrestling historian. Uh, facts. Oh. Random. <laughs> <laughs> random angry wrestling fan. Random angry wrestling We're going to call him Derek. <laughs> Whenever you hear that voice, it's Derek. Um, okay. how are you going to tell me that, uh... That, that, that it wasn't Starcade 83, Craig. Because uh, it wasn't, Derek. Oh. Uh, the, fir- <laughs> <laughs> the first dog collar match took place August 2nd, 1980. For- first through the wall, promptly falls on his face while his Star Trooper helmet goes rolling along. <laughs> and on live TV, he had to get back up real quick and put the helmet back on. And then have the voice dubbed over saying how he was the shock master. Solely, right? Solely. Yes. I'm the shock master. Uh, doing, you know, not since the Black Scorpion has Ole Anderson's voice been attached to such a great, horrible gimmick. Uh, great. But, and it's like that, that McDowell's, is, if you watch the footage and you go back and you look, you'll actually see the Elks Lodge when they're outside shoveling the snow and changing the garbage bags. Mm-hmm. That's the Elks Lodge right across the street. Two iconic places in one, like dead ass. Yeah. I, I had to do ring crew for the Queen's Elks Lodge once and I was so excited because it was the Queen's Elks Lodge. It's the Elks Lodge. <laughs> yeah. I like fangirled over a building. And then when we got there with the ring truck, I was like, wait. That's McDowell! <laughs> and of course, I'm driving with like straight up suburban white guy wrestler. He's like, what? I'm like, oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> of course. God, just like later. that. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. And two days the later. The real heavyweight, heavyweight champion, champion of the world. Oh, the balls on them. Uh, and two nights later in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Ric Flair would make his debut, defeating one Jim Powers in his WWF debut. No, yeah, that tracks. Yeah, that does track. Uh, and I believe they, it. They, they, their debut, which they filmed and I guess they deleted it, had Colonel Parker bringing. At the time, they were Cole and I forget the other name. It, it was Cole Booker and T Kane. and Cole, 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 yeah, Cole and yeah. Kane. Yeah, and they were they were coming out on chains, and Robert Parker was bringing them to the ring while they were chained together. That was yeah. the original idea. And keep in me. mind, we're Robert Parker, uh, Robert Fuller, still dressed like a plantation owner whenever yes, he, he came does. out with uh, with Harlem Heat. Yeah. So that, that part didn't to, change. I think I need to go pray. <laughs> <laughs> As he loses to Jeff Hardy, which was complete bullshit. And um, especially given how they buried Jeff Hardy since then, um, even putting him in the 24-7 chase, which was very demeaning. I've never been a Jeff Hardy fan, but dude, you're 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 running down the ring to chase a 24-7 title and you're a former world champion. Um but well, uh they got Ron they they had uh Ron Killings. they had yeah. R Truth doing it for a year. Yeah, He's but Ron Ron WA champion. They don't, you know the WWE doesn't recognize the NWA, so that, that's a bad example. But I'm saying well, they what they were going to sorry <laughs> never going to see Ron Killings as an NWA champion on the <laughs> WWE TV show. Well, Starting off in the week of December, uh, December first, 1973, right here, Philadelphia, famed Philadelphia Arena. Oh, we're going uh, back. We're, <laughs> yeah, we, oh yeah, yeah, we're going back. Not going air back. conditioned. 
No, not air conditioning. Going back to 46th and Market. Uh, West Philly, born and raised. Where uh, Stan Stasiak was taking on the WWF heavyweight champion Pedro Morales. Square Garden as well. But the same thing would happen. There would be riots. Um, and not saying with Italian fans and or Latin American fans or any more, you know. I'm blaming those Italians. <laughs> I don't know. And, and the Italians would blame the Latin American fans for they nah. cause riots too. Nah. Well, on this, <laughs> on, the, on this particular day, Dan, it was already... Which ironically, uh, not ironic, ironic, ironically in my life, uh, is mm-hmm. the tour my dad... My, that's his favorite band. Not Genesis. Cream Mike was his other favorite. It was Cream and Mike and Mechanics. For some reason, Mike and Mechanics the, is his shit. He likes the offshoots. Not he so likes the, the offshoots, not the main... He doesn't like <laughs> Derek the and the Dominoes of Genesis. He likes yes. Cream, Cream Mike and Mechanics. And Mike, Mike and the Mechanics. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't like yeah, I'm a, I'm a, shit. Yeah. I'm a big Them Crooked Vulture fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, those, I, don't, I, don't, I like their side bands. I like that. I like. I like that. I like Wings yeah. better than the Beatles. Yeah, Queens of the Stone Age. That's a band. There's a band. Fuck you. <laughs> That's a highlight. That's gonna be an unaired. Or didn't have a problem with it. Um. So it it it's happening. Uh. The TNA Impact Women's Champion will be part of the Royal Rumble. I'm. Well, I'm excited. I I'm excited. I'm. Happy um, for her. I uh, don't even if it's a one-time thing. I'm sure she'll love the i the uh, the idea of coming back and reuniting with her old friends and being a part of a big stage. I know she'll love the crowd because because well, <laughs> they're not they one for impact. That's it. <laughs> hey, you didn't say you mumbled it. Uh, 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 for, for impact. In any company on TV, whether it be MLW, Ring of Honor, if they're coming back, don't know what's going on there. Impact, AEW, or WWE. That man is so goddamn good. Yes. He, he's so good. Anybody who doesn't believe in Keith Lee is a fucking moron. I'm sorry. And if, you, and if you're sitting there going, well, I don't like Keith Lee. I'm not a fucking moron. You are. <laughs> if you don't. If, if you, you don't... don't see Keith Lee. Yes, you are. Sorry. And no, what makes it also incredulous about this is because this was an athlete that checks every single box, not just for what you want in a professional wrestler, um, monster heel, baby face or heel. He checks all the boxes for Vince. He looks great. He's a big guy. He's a big guy that can move. He's a big guy. Hmm. Nothing wrong with Brian Kelly. There's nothing... <gasps> yes. And by the way, we're limited. Whoa! Whoa! Hold on! Recording stopped. Fuck yes! You gotta rewind. Yes! I... Coming out of commercial. God break. damn! Fuck yes! Face of the river. See what I don't. Got you're fucking lost, WWE. You bunch of dumb asses. That's your loss. Oh, fuck, I'm so happy. To be a UFC champion named Thea Trinidad. A long history of fighters named with the last name of Trinidad. Would have been, there was nothing wrong with that name that you could make a ton of money with, but... Zelina Vega is what they came up with. Again, something else you can build on. Yeah. The lineage of that name in sports in general, in boxing and everywhere else. You can yeah. absolutely build on that in the wrestling world. And I don't want to hear that. Well, it's not a real family member. Uh, Lance Von Erich. Just to name one. <laughs> exactly. None of the Andersons are related. Yeah. What? Well, huh? a rainbow color and turning on the lights. 
um, unless you infuse your your show with better booking and better talent, all that's not going to do anything. Polish a uh, turd, it's still a turd. Exactly. Yes. Oh, I finished it for you. There you go. Yes. <laughs> no, you're right. I was excited. I was when they were. I was like, all right, man, we're gonna change it from the yellow and black, and we're gonna infuse a little life into it. I can't wait to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Fun while it lasted. Bret Hart, Jake Roberts, all in Stampede at the same time that Alan College was. You got to learn the ropes. Got to be a little bit better. Found a persona that he liked. And after that, he became Bad News Allen for much of his career until he got to the WWF. Vince didn't like the Allen so much, but liked the color of his skin. So Allen no, told him, <laughs> Bad News Brown. 